Do you understand how lucky we are to have crypto? Every single year, the wealth gap increases and it becomes harder and harder to make money. But we were gifted a golden opportunity. Maybe what is one of the last opportunities of this decade to take advantage of what is a new breakthrough technology. Times like this won't last forever and opportunities like this in the 21st century are fickle. How many times in the last few decades have we had an opportunity like this? Probably not since the tech bubble back in the early 2000s. But truthfully, time is running out to capitalize. So if you're serious about making it in cryptocurrency in 2024, watch this entire video because I'm about to hit you with some of the most crucial alpha that you need to know to succeed in the crypto market. And I believe if you watch this whole video, by the end, you're going to come out the other side a much better crypto investor and trader. And hopefully on this journey together, we can all absolutely smash this bull run in 2024 and whatever lies beyond. If you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. The growth has been absolutely incredible to see. Thank you so much to all the recent subs for joining the community. I'll keep doing my best to give you crypto alpha every single day. And if you do enjoy these types of videos, whether it be strategies, guides, altcoin picks, etc., make sure to hit that sub button and click that notification bell for daily crypto alpha. In fact, if you have the notification bell turned on and you came here from a notification, let me know in the comments below by commenting the Nodi gang. I know I've got a really strong army there of Nodi gang members that watch these videos as soon as they come out. And I'm really, really appreciative of that because it's you guys that make this channel so special. So Mars, what are you talking about? What is the structure of today's video? Well, on the weekend, I was doing a little bit of reading. Some people in their leisure time read fiction. Some people in their leisure time watch Netflix or watch sport. For me, my leisure time comes in the form of scrolling through crypto Twitter. And there is one account on crypto Twitter, which is a legendary account. If you've been on CT at all, you'll know who GCR is. GCR is one of the most famous, successful, renowned traders that crypto Twitter has ever seen and very highly respected within crypto circles. If you don't spend too much time on crypto Twitter and you mostly get your crypto information from YouTube, just to give you a bit of background as to GCR is, he's been one of the top traders on crypto exchanges. At one point, he was sitting number two on FTX. As you can see in front of you, he was sitting 11 at the time of this post, which is absolutely crazy. You need to be making millions, tens of millions, maybe even hundreds of millions of dollars to crack the leaderboard on these exchanges. I mean, just some of the PLs that he shared really paint the picture for who GCR is and the type of profits he can make um, at any given time. And he was one of the guys that absolutely smashed the last bull run. Some of the on chain wallets that were belonging to GCR were tracked in the eight figure range. The guy's probably worth nine figures. Maybe he's even a billionaire. But one thing is for sure some of the alpha that you can still find to this day on his Twitter account is absolutely top notch. And I'm a big believer that if you are to succeed in this market, you need to follow the advice and follow the leadership of people that are above you. So there's levels to this crypto game. If you're just starting, you might be a beginner. Then there's more intermediate people that have been in the space for one to two years. Maybe they're creating YouTube videos. Then there are people like me who have been in the space for five years now. Three to four of those years, I've been full-time crypto. I know my stuff. But then there's another level above me of these absolute legends like GCR, who I look up to and I respect. So what I've done in today's video it's very different from previous videos that I've done. I've gone through every single one of GCR's tweets. I literally spent three to four hours scrolling through his tweets. I've handpicked the top 10 alpha posts that he's ever posted. And these are incredible lessons that make him the trader that he is. And we're going to break down these lessons and apply them to the current market. And as I said, I believe if you watch this whole video, you're going to have a massive leg up on the rest of your competition because you're literally getting insights from the brain of one of the smartest minds that crypto Twitter and the crypto industry in general has ever seen, at least on the trading side. So if you're interested in crypto trading, investing, making money in the market, these are the types of guys that you absolutely should be studying. And he's someone that I actively study. And this reinforced so many amazing lessons for me over the weekend, which even made some of my current trades absolutely click. So without further ado, let's get into these 10 posts and let's break them down and enjoy this ride. I think it'll be a fun one.
Just a quick note, these posts aren't in chronological order. I've ordered them in the way that I think it makes sense, going from broad to some more niche topics. But you'll notice we jump around the years a little bit. You might get something more recent. You might get something from 2022. It really just depends on if what he's saying is still valid in today's market and if it can be applied, how you can apply it and how it can make you a better trader and investor. So let's kick off with the first one here on February 5th, 2023. GCR says, I continue to hold large positions in spot Bitcoin and ETH as I believe we bottom in November and remain bullish on the future with an eye on 10k ETH by 2023. 90% would be better off as holders. This advice only relevant to degen traders playing the game of altcoin rotations, which he was giving some advice related to meme coins. But it's this line here that really stands out to me. 90% would be better off as holders. Now, let's not look at the crypto market for a second. Let's actually look at the stock market because the crypto market operates on these really short hype and narrative cycles. The stock market operates similarly in terms of it has its bull markets, it has its bear markets, but the cycles are elongated versus crypto. So this lesson becomes a lot more clear when you zoom out. In the stock market, and the same lesson does apply for crypto, time in the market is much more important than timing the market. You can see here, there are huge black swans that occur. Financial crisis, bailouts, Lehman Brothers collapsing, hedge funds collapsing, wars, elections, etc. All of these events can cause massive corrections. But what do we see time and time again? The stock market continuing to power forward and make new highs despite these events in the meantime. And this is largely due to the fact that the only real solution that governments around the world have is to increase the monetary supply, increase liquidity. And we know Bitcoin is extremely responsive to global liquidity. In fact, Global liquidity, which can be tracked by the M2 monetary index, is the number one proponent of Bitcoin price action over a longer time frame. So Bitcoin, essentially, I view as a sponge. Any excess liquidity in the market gets soaked up by Bitcoin. So it's highly responsive to environments where money printing is occurring. And this is the only solution that fiat currency has. And that's why I'm so confident that the debasement of currency will lead to continuous higher Bitcoin prices over time. And then you have other demand side factors like the Bitcoin spot ETF, which are now starting to factor in and cause this supply squeeze. So that's why I'm bullish on crypto longer term. You can apply that logic to Bitcoin and Ethereum. And of course, altcoins do benefit from Bitcoin and Ethereum. But the other point I want to make here relating to the stock market is that if you miss the market's 10 best days over the past 30 years, your returns would have been cut in half. Missing the best 30 days would reduce your returns by an astonishing 83%. So people that try and cut in and out of the stock market, they actually significantly underperform those that just DCA and hold over time. Now, of course, the stock market operates under an elongated cycle. Crypto operates on shorter term hype cycles. However, this logic can still be applied to crypto by saying, look, accumulating and holding for the majority of you, the vast majority of you is actually going to be the better strategy than trying your hand at becoming a crypto trader. Now, this isn't saying crypto trading is bad. If you have an edge, you should maximize your edge. When you see a strong opportunity, you should back that opportunity with conviction. But don't cut in and out of your portfolio. Don't make rash decisions with your portfolio. Don't go 50% out, then back in and try and time the top and the bottom. You're not going to be able to unless you're either extremely experienced or extremely lucky. So for the average person, now you may, you may be above average. You may be able to trade in and out of this market. But for the average person, DCAing, investing in the market over a longer period, accumulating quality assets, not being scared when the market dips, taking advantage of dips, not being scared to take profits when the market rises, generally that is the best strategy to go down. So that is a very important lesson that I wanted to lead with because I do get a lot of questions about trading versus investing in crypto. Moving on to tweet number two. GCR says, general trading principle as we watch meme coins pump. This is extremely relevant right now, by the way, because we are seeing across multiple chains like Base and Solana meme coins pumping. He says, within alt cycles, you should crank up risk when the trend first reverses and begin to gradually protect capital as time passes. People lose because they do the exact opposite. They go slow early and increasingly greedy with time. I want you to screenshot this and I want this to set into your minds because the way he's contextualized this here is perfect. And it sums up maybe what I've been trying to say, but haven't been able to articulate as well. And this is basically, you want to take on less risk as the market goes up 
and more risk when the market first starts to begin a trend. Now, this is especially true for narrative trading. If you see a new narrative just starting to show strength, I talk about identifying strength all the time on my shows. This is usually a better time to go heavier with positioning. As that narrative shoots up in price, generally you want to start going more risk off. Now, this may mean either slowing down your average buys or taking profits from that position. And this can also be applied generally to the market, not just altcoin narratives. If we look at the total three market on the weekly, when this trend first started to reverse, and obviously we got signs during this rally, but it really wasn't until we started to clear this 400 billion mark that I started really averaging in because this was kind of just a sideways period, an accumulation phase, but not an urgent one because we don't know how long it was going to last. This trend started reversing. Sure, if you missed the trend reversal, you would have missed a 28% move. But what was to come after that initial reversal was another 82%. So starting to get more risk on in this area quite aggressively, more aggressively, more aggressively, more aggressively, and then slowly less aggressive as time goes on. Now, if we do want to zoom out, we could assert, okay, alts may end up going a lot higher. And look, it's of my belief at some point, alts are going to move a lot higher. So this actually may still end up being in the middle of the phase. We may see at some point, and it may chop and we may get dips, who knows, but we may see at some point a blow off top, whenever it is. Now, this obviously is the time to start going risk off. And if this is the middle period, then it still could be the time on major pullbacks to jump into a macro accumulation phase. But just be wary. Generally speaking, the best method to approach the market is going more aggressive on your buys at the start of a trend reversal. And as that trend gets bigger and bigger and bigger, get less aggressive, slow down and protect some capital. Such a good lesson here from GCR and one that I think is gonna be in a, a really important one for this cycle, especially as things get crazy. Let's go on to the next point, and this is following on from the previous point because this attacks the human psychology side of it. He says, it's too expensive for the average man to fly to Macau or Vegas. Decentralized casinos and or decentralized Ponzi's is the fastest horse when we have easy money and macro risk is on, aka money printing, stock market going up, bullishness in the global markets. I'm long humans being desperate, greedy, degenerate, lonely and trapped in the metaverse. I love this line. I'm long humans being desperate, greedy, degenerate, lonely and trapped in the metaverse. I mean, this is where the world's going, isn't it? It's a digital economy. People are becoming more lazy. People are looking for easy ways to make money. Gambling a lot of the time gives them that, you know, allure of being able to make money overnight. And what is a better casino than the crypto casino? There is no bigger, there is no easier. There is no more fun. There is no more addicting casino in the world than crypto. If you've been in the market, you'll know exactly what I mean. And as someone that trades meme coins and degens into positions, watching a coin 10x overnight, it gives you that feeling. It gives you that rush of dopamine. People are chasing that dopamine and you can actually get a bigger hit in the crypto casino than, than you can in a real casino. Not only that, but it's accessible. So if you want a bull market thesis, and, and, and you don't want to look into on-chain flows, if you don't want to look at the spot ETF, if you don't want to look at global liquidity or anything, I'm pretty sure you could build a crypto bull run thesis purely off the back of the point that humans are innately gamblers. And I mean, Solana is a great example. Why is Solana a great example? Because Solana has been the biggest casino. It is the chain where most of the gambling is taking place. And on the Solana chain, you don't have chips like you have in Vegas. The Solana token is the currency of that chain. So Solana, although it's a layer one blockchain and an infrastructure bet, the proxy it's trading within is actually that of a gambling currency. That's what it is. You trade in and out of memes, you trade in and out of NFTs. The, the Solana token is like the, the chips at a, at a Vegas casino. And for that reason, it's absolutely skyrocketed in price. Because it, more tokens have been diluting in the market, the price is actually misleading. It is at market cap all-time highs crossing over $85 billion at one point. So Solana is a great example of this and a great example of when the crypto casino kicks into action, look at how crazy these tokens can reprice. So this is also alpha for you on, on other L1s. If you start to see the signs of a meme coin season, and I actually did a video, video on base yesterday for those um, that caught that. Actually, a lot of coins are up like a 2, 3x since then and a 4, 5x since my thread on Friday. Um, if you're early to see those rotations, like, I was, for example, with base on Friday, there's a lot of money to be made. I mean, some of those positions since my thread are up four, five, six X. And that's not for me to gloat. That's just me saying, you got to catch the rotations early 
and there's lots of alpha in that, and there will continue to be opportunities on that across other L1s as they become their own respective casinos. Because look, hate it or love it, this is the biggest use case for crypto. And if you just take that in your stride, you can also benefit from it. Now, in terms of new opportunities, you know, I'll always do my best to give you those opportunities on this channel. I wanna make this the best place for free crypto education on the internet and I'll strive my best to do that every single day. But those who watched yesterday's show will know I did announce an exclusive community. This community isn't replacing my channel. In fact, the channel's only gonna get better over time as now I have more resources to pour into research to make these videos. But I wanted to give an additional offering for those that wanna go a little bit deeper, that want more one-on-one -on -one time with me, that want information quicker because I can't always make a video. So I decided to band together some of the strongest traders across CT in my network to create an alpha community. Now I said that we'd cap it at a thousand people. We're currently at 700. You guys aped into this. We're over 700 and it's only been what, like 15 hours since my last video, maybe like 20 by the time this video is out. So maybe by the time you're watching the waitlist is full, but there might still be time. So if you are watching and you're interested in joining the community, click the link in the description or in the pinned comment below to join the waitlist. If there is still room, up to the first 1,000 people will get in and then unfortunately we're going to have to close the cap because I want this to be a tight-knit community and I want to be able to dedicate time and resources into a select group instead of spreading it too thin. We may raise the cap in the future, but I'm not sure in, in the shorter term. I think it's best to start with a, a smaller community. And, and just to give you a little bit of a sneak peek as to what's in there, I've basically got, as I said, some of the strongest traders that I could find and that I've been working with for the last couple of years. One is Paradise. You can see every day he posts coins on his watch list. He also gives you overviews, swing setups, intraday setups, etc. We have Fabian, who's one of the best altcoin gem hunters that I know. Also an amazing macro analyst. He's going to be posting market commentary, his macro outlook, altcoin picks every day. We have my section, which is an alpha section, which I'm going to keep under wraps for now. For those who manage to get into the group, will get access to that. There's an airdrop hub and much, much more. So I won't get too much into it, but I just wanted to follow up on that. Just in case you didn't have time yesterday, I want to make sure you don't miss it. And for anyone that can't get in or doesn't want to join, that's also okay. The thing is, a lot of the resources from that group, I'm actually directing into beefing up my research department here on the channel. So I have a goal. As I said, I want to be the number one information source in terms of crypto alpha on YouTube, on the internet. And in order to do that, I need to beef up my research. So I think these shows are only going to get better over time. And I'm really, really excited uh, to continue this journey with you. I think those that have been following my channel for the last two months, three months will notice like every day the content gets better and better. That's because I'm putting more effort in every single day. So that's not going to change because of this group. That's an additional add-on for those that want to go a bit deeper and are really serious about investing and trading and need that extra research, need, you know, institutional data and, th and that kind of stuff. And if that's you, I'm really excited to see you in that community. Let's continue getting on with the rest of the video. Some absolute alpha bombs yet to come because GCR is just full of alpha. He says, ironically, the most bullish path for Doge would be for Twitter to never actually integrate it into anything. Would be for Musk to tease, hint, meme, riddle, joke that there was a master plan for years, allowing people's imagination to go wild. We call it the Hoskinson, never deliver. Um, and we actually did actually see this with Cardano where smart contracts launched and it became buy the rumor, sell the news. So the only add-on that I have to this tweet is in crypto, hype and rumors are oftentimes more powerful than actual announcements. So for a lot of coins, the build up to a big announcement, that is where you'll see the greatest gains. So if there's a mainnet launch and it's being hyped, if there's a major partnership that's being hyped, anything that's already in the public, the market will do its best of pricing it in. And that's why you always have to be cognizant of buying the rumor and selling the news in crypto. You'll become a much better news trader if you do that. And in terms of news traders, GCR also had a tweet saying, when news impacts the price, market participants often fixate on whether it's true or not true. So to go over that first line, when news comes out, the first thing people will try and do is say, okay, if, is this news true? If so, the price should go up. If this news is false, price should stay the same or go down. But more often than not, the actual veracity of the headline is immaterial. It's how the market reacts to the news and for how long that turns out to be a lot more informative. Now you could sit with this one for 10 minutes and I actually sat with this for like 10, 15 minutes and actually really thought about it because it's actually quite a complex concept. But what he's saying is 
it's not whether news is true or not, which matters. It's how the price action reflects that news because the market sentiment is what matters and what drives price. So we did see this with the Bitcoin spot ETF. The red line is when it was announced, right? We saw it pump, then we saw the market dump, then we saw it chop sideways. A lot of people around this time were thinking, oh, is a spot ETF actually going to get approved or is it going to get denied? And price was kind of oscillating in this, in this manner that was basically like, is it, is it not? Is it, is it not? Then as it became more clear, it was going to get approved. Price started grinding up and up and up. And the speculation on whether we get approved or not wasn't even the thing that ended up mattering. The thing that ended up mattering was the fact that the market believed in it, that the market started to price it in, that the market started to shift. And it's this reaction which actually started to tell you Bitcoin's actually going to go a lot higher. Now, of course, what ended up happening over the last few months with the ETF flows being super positive, maybe that took some people off guard. We didn't expect it to be that positive. But what GCR says here is reflective of what occurred with Bitcoin. It's how the market reacted and for how long that was informative of market sentiment. The market wanted an excuse to pump. It got it through the Bitcoin ETF. And that was what signaled this next leg up. And then alts actually ended up running after. So this is a very good tweet. And you can also take it in multiple ways. That's one example I gave you. But there are many ways to actually apply this. And the, the amazing thing about GCR tweets is that they're open for interpretation. They can mean different things. And he, he's a very intellectual being. Um, he, he puts a, I, I could tell he puts a lot of thought and nuance behind these tweets that you'll only catch up on if you like monitor them a few times. What I'm actually going to do after this video, by the way, and the video is going to go out first, but later tonight, I'm going to post a thread, which is going to have all these tweets in one place. I'll link that in the description below as soon as the thread's done. Now let's go through the remaining five. GCR says, try to think of your Ponzi's like prize fighters rather than coins. Winners win and losers lose. Men will literally cut their winners and add to their losers rather than go to therapy. This tweet is quite simple. You want a long strength. You want to back the winners. You don't want a long laggards in the market and... Add to your winners, cut your losers is pretty much a winning strategy in a crypto bull market, given how momentum takes over. I talk about identifying strength a lot on the shows. You may get sick of it, but it's for a reason because that is such an important concept to grasp if you want to succeed in the bull run. Moving on, no matter how many times they see it play out, people continue to underestimate the gravitational power of the low unit bias effect on retail. It's the most powerful magnet in crypto. Why would any person in a sound mind buy 100 coins when they could own a million? Cheapest coin on CB. Um, and, he, and he's referring to Doge at that time. This is true. People see whiff at $3 and they go, wow, that's expensive. $3? Shib's only 0 0.00002. And it's funny because experienced market participants, we don't even think about this because we know, okay, that's dumb. Let's focus on market cap. But maybe we're the dumb ones because maybe we should be thinking like retail who think like that. Low unit bias is a thing, especially when they get attached to certain multiples. This is another tweet that GCR did saying that hard round numbers are obvious convergence points on nebulously valued reflexive assets respect the shelling point. This is what happened with Doge. The shelling point was a dollar. For Doge. Everyone wanted to pump Doge to a dollar. Now, I think it fell slightly short, but that was why it was pumping. So when you have these low unit bias tokens, they can often pump a lot harder, especially if they're in the vicinity of a round number like a dollar because people are targeting these dollars. Now, this can be important for upside targets, but it's also very important for downside targets because these can act as psychological levels of support that can protect a position. So as stupid as it sounds, it's actually sometimes wise to take into account the unit bias when you are trading tokens and also take into account the shelling point as GCR says. So these big whole round numbers that can actually act as major support and resistances. And you'll notice across a variety of tokens, these levels are major resistance. Solana, it was $100. Phantom, it was $1. When you break through these levels, it actually, if that level flips from resistance into support, it can act as a great foundation for the next leg up a lot of the times. Now, once that leg up does happen, GCR has... An amazing tweet on taking profits. That's very important, especially for meme coins. If you trade meme coins, listen to this. He says, getting messages from people who have made tremendous wealth off this thesis, but wealth isn't wealth until it's realized. It's not a crime to secure some profit from coins that pumped. When volume is great to the market cap, parabolas are often in their final stages. This is a little bit of alpha. When you're trading coins, especially Ponzi coins or hype coins that you know go crazy, 
um, on the market, on exchanges, and build up a lot of volume. If you see volume consistently flipping the market cap, that's a good sign that a top is in. I haven't seen a coin very long, or at least a local top, manage to maintain consistently volume higher than market cap unless there's an extremely low cap. So for any token above 100 mil, you can apply this logic, especially for the meme coins. It's marked multiple tops on Doge, SHIB, and Pepe. Even with recently as well, uh, volume started to flip 2 billion and then it ended up retracing. So keep that in mind. I'm going to move on to a slightly different point now, but all of these points are very important, I think, to grasp. And I've sprinkled nuggets throughout the video. So those who are watching now, you're getting alpha just as strong as those who, who have already clicked off. He says, he who chases the two rabbits catches neither. And I think this is something where a lot of people go wrong in this market. They spread their attention too wide. They try and focus on airdrop farming and day trading and investing and AI and gaming, but they also want to invest in DeFi stuff and they also want to invest in RWAs and the strategy just gets too broad. You want to be an NFT trader, you want to be a meme coin expert. Guys, the best way for you to succeed in this market is to niche down. Pick one or two things that you're really passionate about and become an expert. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with having a diversified portfolio. I own a lot of coins. Look, I am full-time, so I have more time to manage it. But look, I even think it's fine holding 20, 30 coins if you're okay with managing it. It's not about the coins that you hold. It's about your attention and your focus because your attention and your focus will dictate the edge that you're able to get on certain niches. So I highly recommend finding something and becoming an expert. Become an AI expert. Okay, maybe it's not always going to pump, but when it does pump, you're equipped with the best coins, but also the best knowledge to maximize that pump. Become an NFT ex expert if you're into NFTs. Become a meme coin trading expert if you're into meme coins. To become good at anything, you've got to be a master, not a jack of all trades. And that's the point GCR is trying to get across here. And it's a very important one. So definitely niche down. Niching down could mean niching down into a certain trading strategy, niching down into a certain sector. But just keep that in mind. Try and become an expert at something. Very important. I started out by being a DeFi expert. Since then, I've shifted my focuses a little bit. But that's how I learned a lot about crypto. I was so into De DeFi, yield farming, trading on chain. That's how I learned how to monitor things on DeFi Llama, flows, how to use apps like Dex tools, how to work out whether a token has red flags, are the holders growing, is it gaining traction, like all this sort of stuff I learned just from being on-chain trading. So it was that first-hand experience niching into DeFi that makes me the trader and investor that I am today. And that knowledge is really, really hard to replace if you haven't been in the trenches doing it. Next tweet from GCR, he says, it's been repeated on CT for years, it's some of the most obvious advice, but for those of you that haven't digested it, if you don't have much cash and looking to get capitalized, there's no greater opportunity in this world than farming airdrops can really change your life. I mean, look, it's true. I know a lot of followers of mine potentially have hit massive airdrops. I know, you know, I've had some crazy airdrops. Look, maybe they weren't life-changing for me just due to the representative percentage of my portfolio, but to a lot of people they have been. And I still don't know a better EV thing to do in crypto. You may notice I'm not doing so much airdrop content. I think for me, that's not because I'm not interested in farming airdrops. It's just because it was getting a bit stale doing all these airdrop videos. I want to come in with fresh alpha. I, I want to give you fresh guides, strategies, etc. I actually want to focus more on education. I want to make you a better trader. So I kind of got sick of doing the airdrop videos. But when there, when there is a major update, I 100% I, I'm going to continue to do updates because this is the standard practice now for launching a token. Every single project that I meet is planning on launching an airdrop. It's a strategy that will continue to be profitable for this reason until maybe it's regulated out of existence. You probably still have about a year though. Look, I think this year's the real golden year. But if there is an extended bull run, you may even have success with this into 2025. But it won't be here forever. So take advantage of this meta while you can. Um, in the Discord, we are going to have an airdrop hub. It's an airdrop hub where me and my airdrop researchers are going to post daily alpha, daily strategy, and we're also going to have an airdrop tracker to help you keep up to date, airdrop calendar, etc., as well as a discussion room to answer questions on airdrop farming. So if you are an airdrop degen, you may want to sign up for the waitlist because I think you will enjoy that for a little bit more hands-on stuff. But as I said, I'll still be here on the channel doing videos every now and then when I have a major update. And unfortunately, GCR is not blessing us with this alpha anymore. He hasn't posted since April 20th, even though he's been active on other group chats and stuff. So I would love for GCR to make a return. Um, 
I really, really enjoy his stuff. I still think to this day, he's posted some of the most alpha out of everyone. Not necessarily like giving you altcoin trades. There are amazing people on Twitter and, and, and YouTube. Um, I consider myself in that basket, you know, that can find altcoin rotations and help you spot them early. But where he really excels is, is the thinking piece, which has made him a great trader. You know, the whole adage of giving instead of giving a man a fish, you know, teaching him how to fish. I think GCR has done that quite well. And hopefully this video translates that to you in a digestible package. And the thread that I'll link in the description should also help you do that. So I hope you did enjoy this video today. I hope you learned something from it. I think it's very interesting. At least I find it interesting because I spent hours on the weekend looking through his tweets. And yeah, it's even reinforced some concepts for me that I, that I forget. I actually love making videos, by the way, because it helps me, even me reinforce stuff. By there's no better tool to improve than teaching. This is actually something I recommend for you. Create some crypto content. Create a Twitter account. Post some stuff. Maybe you'll get no followers. Who cares? Use it as a journal. Having a public journal is extremely powerful. This is what I did in my early days. I used I was tweeting random stuff, random thoughts. Some were right, some were wrong. But I was learning because I, you know, I had some accountability because it was public. So I actually recommend doing it. There's nothing to lose. And hey, you may hit a viral tweet and your life may change forever. And who knows? That's kind of what happened with me. People started resonating with my stuff. Tweets started going viral and I found myself creating more content. So that's a little tip for you today. Start creating content. Even if, even if you don't want to post it, create it for yourself. By teaching, you're going to learn. And that's something that I think I've reinforced today. I'll see you in the next video tomorrow. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. If you aren't already subscribed, click that subscribe button. Make sure the notification bell is clicked on. So you don't miss a single video, come join the Nerdy Gang and I will see you later. Have a lovely rest of your day. Peace.